Hello, uh, good morning everyone from uh, Kyoto International Conference Center. Sorry, we are around the five or six minutes late uh, due to some technical reasons. Uh, today, we are here in IGF and I'm Binod Basnet, Director of Educating Nepal. And we're here for a networking session, Bridging Connectivity Gaps and Harnessing E-Resilience. As the global stakeholders are striving for the last mile connectivity, we know that there's still a one third of population that still do not have access to the internet. And if we break this down to L LDCs, it's about 64% of population that do not have access to the internet. And uh, during the COVID, it was quite evident that connectivity is a lifeline in many ways for information access, for healthcare, for education, and so forth. But it's not just only about connectivity, even in the regions and countries that have access to connectivity, it has to be a resilient connectivity. When there, is, uh, when there are cases of disaster, the connectivity tends to get disrupted. So what is the backup plan? That is a very pertinent question. So with these two issues in hand, connecting the unconnected and making the connecting connected resilient, today we're proposing some innovative solution for these two cases. So today we have a panel of speakers for our networking session. First, we have Dr. Sakano from ATR, who will be talking about Lux system as a solution for disaster and backup communication system. And secondly, we have Jeffrey, Jeffrey Lanto and Glendel from Civisnet. Jeff is the executive director of Civisnet, and Glendel is the representative of that organization. And thirdly, we have uh, Chandra Prakash, Mr. Chandra Prakash Sarma from Wisflox India Private Limited. And finally, we have one of the champions and pioneers of optic fibers and standards, Dr. Okomura-san, who will also be proposing an innovative solution to rural and uh, unconnected populations connectivity. So without further ado, I'd like to ask Dr. Sakano to give a presentation on LUX system. Please let us give, give us an introduction of the LUX system. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. So please show my slide. So I, I, I can share the slide by, by okay, shall, can I start? Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, Vinod, for the kind introduction. Uh, my name is Toshikazu Sakano from Advanced Telecommunications Research Institute in the National, based in Kyoto, Japan. Uh, Actually, I started uh, research and development on ICT for disaster countermeasure just after the big earthquake uh, occurred in uh, west, uh, east, and north part of Japan in 2011, uh, when I was uh, working for NTT Laboratories. And I moved to ATR. Uh, current institution and started the new project called LUX project. In my talk, I'd like to introduce the research and development and my idea of uh, restore, restore the uh, 
issues that happen in the disaster situation. So uh, let me uh, briefly introduce our uh, next slide, please. The, this is, ah, okay, thank you. Uh, this one slide is to introduce ATR. Uh, ATR is a private research institute founded in 1986, and main themes are computational neuroscience, uh, deep interaction science. This is robotics, uh, communication robotics. Uh, you can see uh, down right, uh, this is an Android robot uh, developed by ATR, and wireless communications and life science. And I'm from Web Engineering Laboratories, uh, which is doing a research and development on wireless communication and other ICT issues. And I'm from uh, Web Engineering Labs. Next, please. So let me start uh, the background of my research and development. Uh, this one slide showed the number of disasters by uh, continent and top 10 countries in 2021. And uh, looking at this slide, uh, Asia Pacific region has a, a many uh, disasters happens. And under this big disaster happened, please go to the next slide. <laughs> okay, uh, some big issue happens. So uh, under the big, big earthquake or big disasters, uh, communication network is disrupted often uh, for example, base station and communication buildings are disrupted. That means you can not telephone and internet anymore. And uh, that prevents us from using uh, daily use, Google, Yahoo, uh, Facebook, uh, not Facebook, no. uh, Amazon, that kind of services you cannot use anymore. But at the same time, under the big disasters, the demand for uh, communications uh, will go up. So there's a big gap happens under the uh, disaster situation. So this is an issue I wanted to uh, resolve using ICT. So next slide. Next. Okay, so uh, what I thought in resolving this issue, uh, I focus on the locality or local communication. This one slide uh, with a lot of characters uh, shows a human other human characteristics. People communicate more with the people with more closer physical distance. Uh, this characteristics can be said communication locality. So if you are very close, you uh, communicate with the person uh, more frequently. That is the characteristics of human. So if you restore the local communication uh, under the disaster uh, situation with uh, internet and other network service disruption, uh, that will help to uh, people uh, under the disaster situation. That, that is the uh, thing I wanted to do. Next, please. So uh, after starting the research and development, uh, when I was NTT, I proposed an uh, uh, architecture or concept called MDRU, Movable and Deployable Research Unit. This concept is once big disaster occurs, uh, you can uh, bring the resources for restoring uh, communication services for local communication to the disaster affected areas and restore uh, quickly for local communication. Uh, this concept was uh, standardized at ITUT as L.392. And uh, this, this was the work uh, when I was NTT Labs. And next please. And after after I moved to ATR, I launched a new project called LUX. Uh, and 
The MDRU itself was focused on the telephone service, and LUGS is almost the same as MDRU, but the uh, focus point is internet services like social networking service. So uh, LUGS itself is comprised of uh, battery and Wi-Fi access point and small servers, and I put uh, software for social networking service in the server, uh, that, that is the uh, concept of LUX. <clears throat> so once big disaster occurs, you can bring this LUX to the disaster affected area with no internet connectivity. Uh, then uh, people can, use, can access to this LUX using Wi-Fi uh, functionality, using your own uh, smartphones and uh, browsers access to the social networking service functionality. That is the basic concept of LUX. Next, please. So uh, this is the outlook of prototype of LUX. Uh, LUX is comprised of LUX server, Wi-Fi access point, battery, uh, network hub, and some peripherals. All these things are packed in a, a portable case. And that, that is the outlook. Next, please. And this, this is the um, uh, functions uh, LUX offer as a social networking service. Uh, as you can see, uh, chat function and video one-to-one -one or group communication and feed function and phases function. Uh, these functions are offered uh, to people that surrounding uh, who, uh, people who surround these LUX devices. So this is uh, limited to local communication, but you can keep using this kind of social networking function. That is the concept of LUX. Please, next please. So uh, I, uh, our team has conducted a series of feasibility studies, uh, mainly in uh, Seb Island in Philippines, and detail will be presented by uh, next uh, person, Jeffrey, so I will skip this slide. Next please. <laughs> and this is also uh, another activity after the big typhoon in Philippines, and detail will be presented later. So next, please. So uh, I had focused on uh, disaster issues, but LUX itself can be used for other, uh, other issues in the world. So potential demand of LUX worldwide uh, why the internet use is widespread in everyday life and work for many in high-income countries. As Vino said, one third of population worldwide does not, do not have the access to the internet. That is the big issue uh, worldwide. So uh, to help to restore, uh, to uh, bridging the gap, uh, lags must be efficient centrally used uh, to people in the uh, 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 area, uh, broadband connectivity or internet connectivity is not fully uh, penetrated. Okay, next please. <coughs> so uh, this one slide. Uh, so uh, explain the status I have, uh, we have. So this, uh, we have run research and development of LUX for about five years with the support of stakeholders. As you can see at the bottom of this slide, uh, we should move on to the commercialization uh, phases to LUX. So I launched a startup company named Negro Networks. The objective of the company is to deliver the LUX system and service solutions based on it. At the same time, we extended our R&D recently to include artificial intelligence in LUGS to be efficiently used by the first responders of disasters. Uh, we call new system FLOS, or Frontline Operation System. Okay, next please. Uh, let's complete faster, Sakano-san, we're running out of time. Okay, uh, this is summary. Uh, thank you, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Sakano-san. Now I'd like to request uh, Jeff, to make his presentation. Maybe I'll be the one.
Thank you, Bina. Uh, to start with, uh, I'm Jeffrey Lianto. I'm the executive director of CBSNet Foundation. And together with me is uh, Glendale Monterde, our project manager. And we will discuss and we will talk about the uh, implementation of the locally accessible cloud system in the Philippines. So mm, CBSNet Foundation is a is a project of the government under the Department of Science and Technology that evolved into a foundation in the year 2000. So CBSNet is one of the pioneers to provide uh, internet connection to the Philippines way back in 1994. So we have been working with different partners and stakeholders like ATR and APNIC, okay? So this is the locally accessible cloud system implementation in the Philippines, started in 2019 until March 2023. And next slide, please. So next slide. Uh, as mentioned, we are a government project and it evolved into foundation. Next slide, please. Then we have partners uh, local and international partners. We are we have strong partnership with the government. We also have partnership with uh, APNIC Foundation, ATR, NTT, and USAID. Next slide, please. So we have been recognized our efforts on ICT in the Philippines, and again, it's been recognized in one of the IGF in Mexico. Next slide. So about the LAX project, Dr. Sakan already uh, elaborated about the, the project itself. So the next slide. So this is the implementation right now. Uh, the implementation of the project, it's in the Hilutungan Island, that's in the center part of the Philippines. It's around 7.5 kilometers away from the nearest point of presence of the internet. So we push the signal to that island called Hilutungan. Next slide. So this is the timeline for the LAX project. It started in 2019 until 2023. So what is very significant on this project is this is during the pandemic area. So when Dr. Sakano tested LAX in Tokyo, I mean in Japan, uh, there are several use cases that cannot be uh, implemented in Japan but is at a high need to areas like the Philippines. So it started as in 2019, we, we did some social preparation. Then eventually, when pandemic came in, in 2020 and 2021, uh, there were new use cases that were introduced, like the learning management system that was integrated to the LAX with the help and the development of the software coming from India. So this was not part of the original plan that we had way back in 2019. So eventually, in again, I don't know if it's lucky enough, in 2022, disaster came in. A big typhoon went to the Philippines, and again, new use cases were being introduced, especially on the side of the hardware for LAX to implement, to be a, a charging station so that it can also help to the devices in the island. Next slide, please. So these are the activities that we want to show you. It's more on the pictures. In order to implement the project, you need to have them penetrated at the grassroots levels. So we need to introduce this technology at a very, Minimal, you know, um, so that the the island people, the, the folks on, on the island can uh, get those information immediately. Next slide. Then after training them, we are going to proceed in putting up the infrastructure. Again, this is a challenge because uh, the island doesn't have any, uh, it doesn't have any, any electricity. It relies more on solar power. Uh, it doesn't even have a very strong uh, internet connection. They just rely also on, on weak uh, signals coming from tele telephone companies. 
Okay, next slide. Then once the infrastructure is already installed, this time it's the installation of the locally accessible cloud system. And this is the trainer's training. Here in the picture, we, you notice we, we train the teachers and also train the students how to access the, the system. Next slide. For the usability, uh, there are ser several stakeholders involved in this one. Uh, the, the, the school, uh, the local uh, community, which involves fishermen, uh, uh, housewives, students, and so on. So there's a constant training to the different uh, stakeholders. And, and, and what's very interesting is the LAX, we try to introduce it on a non-disaster uh, era. We tried to introduce LAX on our Christmas party in which we, we had some kind of games that they use it on a non-disaster uh, era. So there's some kind of uh, application for normal times. Okay, next slide, please. And the LAX data access and retrieval for this one, uh, we tested several areas, not only in uh, Hilutungan, but also to the neighboring islands under the APNIC project. So LAX already evolved into another project. It, it's called it, uh, we call it ILET, or the Internet for Sustainable Livelihood Education and Tourism under the uh, partnership with APNIC Foundation. Next slide. Lastly is the, we need to empower the community uh, we need to train them, especially the teachers, because they are the ones who really has the, the, the capability to understand more and grasp more information. So we train the teachers so that they can troubleshoot and they can also install the system by themselves. Okay, so next slide. So I'll give you to Glendale, our project manager, to give the results of the project implementation in the Philippines. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Sir Jeff. To further discuss the um, use cases of um, LUX in the Philippines during pandemic, uh, let me discuss the results of the research and development. First, it, it tested the full potential of LUX outside Japan. So this, this means that during pandemic, um, during its step four and step five of research and development, it allowed successful testing of uh, its performance and functionalities of its features, including voice, messaging, bulletin, among others. Secondly, it integrated Philippine use cases during pandemic. So we've identified additional use cases um, as discussed by Sir Jeff. No, it includes the learning management system, the voice calls, the solar charges for device and including also the local information systems integration of the barangay. Next is uh, we've implemented the local LAX and the cloud LAX methodology. This means that all information stored in the on-premise or local LAX will now be able to sync to the cloud LAX when internet becomes available. And um, next, um, it has a remote implementation to nearby islands, which means it was successfully being implemented in the island of Hilutungan, which is more than six kilometers away from the mainland of Cordova, Cebu. Next is, um, is the collaboration and deployment to Leyte area in partnership with the Visayas State University, or VSU. So it, uh, VSU piloted the successful testing and usage of the learning management system and, of course, the synchronization feature among its um, two campuses. Um, next is we have the formation of the ILET Connect project in partnership with APNIC Foundation Australia and Seed4Com. So the APNIC Foundation had given grants to CVSnet to connect the unserved islands. So it has two phases. The first phase, um, the ILET Connect um, uh, makes a project it makes the LAX as a key component for the com communication support during disaster in Hilutungan Island. And it's in its second phase, it also connects the neighboring islands of Kauhagan and the Panganan Islands. And other next slides, please. 
Um, for other key results, it also um, made the uh, the, uh, the presentation and demonstration to partners and stakeholders, including US, um, USAID Beacon, the Department of Science and Technology Region 7 of the Philippines, and also the Department of Education, and as well as Ramon Abete's uh, Foundation Incorporated. And we are able to present also to international conferences and meetings, including the UNES Cup. And um, just to also give you the potential impacts of the um, LUX, no, uh, the implementation of LUX, um, it gives improved access to information, which means that LUX provides access to critical information during disasters. That helps in making informed decision and take appropriate actions to protect the lives of in the community. Secondly, it will give you enhanced um, coordination, which means LUX facilitates better coordination among different stakeholders involved in the disaster response that helps ensure that resources and assistance are effectively distributed to the community. Next, it, it also gives increased community engagement which means that this allows for more inclusive and community-driven approaches to disaster management. Next, we have the reduced isolation. Um, it is LUX being a tool that can improve the ability of the people to seek assistance and communicate their needs during disasters. And lastly, LUX will give you capacity building. It is to develop skills in disaster communication and response and to enhance resilience and ability to cope with future disasters. So that ends our presentation from CVSnet Foundation Incorporated. Thank you. Thank you, Glendale and Jeff. Uh, now, I'd like to quickly uh, request Mr. Chandra Prakash to talk about the future perspectives of LUX in terms of uh, developing nations. Thank you. Can you put up the slides, please? So good morning, everyone. I'll uh, start with my introduction. So I'm Chandra Prakash Sharma, CEO and founder at Wisflux. Uh, I, we are proud to be representing uh, the Indian collaboration on this wonderful project, which, is, uh, which has so much impact on developing nations. And uh, thank you, Dr. Sakano and the wonderful team uh, for pursuing this project. Um, I really appreciate the dedication of everyone who are present here uh, towards the resilient infrastructure that we all are seeking in developing nations, uh, especially after the uh, wonderful traditional drums and fireworks and uh, the party we had last night. It was difficult probably to wake up early this morning. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, going forward, um, let's move on to the next slide. So I want to, uh, so far we have done uh, trials in Philippines and Japan, but next target is uh, India and other developing nations. And uh, Indian government right now is pushing very um, hard on the digitalization of the governance and uh, infrastructure overall. And we have uh, some wonderful projects going on in terms of digitalization, but uh, the challenge remains because um, although there has been uh, tremendous progress in last uh, few years about connecting the people in remote areas, but still I think we have around 50% of population which doesn't have access to the internet. So not just the access to the internet, but the access to the information uh, is more important. Uh, you can say the internet maybe reaches later, but access uh, to the critical information about government policies and schemes that are available for people in tribal areas or the uh, poor uh, remote areas uh, that we have in different parts of India because a uh, very diverse country geographically as well. We have mountainous region hard to reach, uh, hard to implement any infrastructure. Uh, we have desert and then we have uh, deep forest where uh, many tribal uh, population is uh, living. So to help them access the uh, many advantages the government is offering, the schemes that government is offering, I think this kind of uh, solution is very important for them. And then again, we have a uh, variety of uh, uh, disasters that can occur naturally in India, uh, especially on the uh, coastal regions. And uh, we have earthquake prone regions as well. So after one disaster is uh, hitting this kind of uh, 
device is very useful as we have seen through the implementation in Philippines. Uh, going faster to save uh, time for the next presenter here, uh, you can see that this device uh, has a lot of potential. Dr. Sakano talked about the inclusion of AI on this device, and it's not just the AI access through the cloud <coughs> services, but the wonderful thing about it is that you are able to access it locally. Uh, we, probably you will understand in better terms by uh, the term edge AI, which is for the people who are not uh, connected to the internet. So it has good potential for the e-education as well, and uh, we have in India a public distribution system where government helps uh, by distributing rations to people who uh, cannot afford those. So digitally providing the information and solutions based on such devices is very impactful. Next slide, please. I want to uh, give you a perspective of the future of uh, this technology, not in, I mean, it may seem simple in a way, but uh, it has a huge potential so right now, the privileged uh, who have access to the cloud are able to access the servers, uh, databases, the services from the cloud, uh, including the uh, very powerful and uh, huge potential AI services we have uh, nowadays available. <coughs> Going forward, uh, the cloud providers or the uh, service providers are now trying to bring uh, services as close uh, as possible to the users by deploying uh, the content and services in the edge of the cloud. But then you have the edge uh, where user is sitting, which is the user local area network, in which the LAX uh, network is basically, you can technically understand this is where the LAX uh, architecture sits. And services now can be available within the local area network of the uh, user with or without the connectivity of the upper layers. And then finally, you have the edge where the user devices are sitting, which connect to the upper layer, the local area network accessing the LAC services. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, as we discussed, the impact of the AI is going to be uh, tremendous on uh, all the sectors, and especially if it can be made available local to the remote communities uh, for farmers providing insights about, for example, the diseases, if they can upload a photo and understand better about the farming, uh, the healthcare, local healthcare workers, uh, the safety workers, uh, the uh, emergency responders, and even in the education. And the benefit of uh, such AI is uh, because it is local, it can offer the faster data processing and uh, enhance security with the less consumption of bandwidth and being energy efficient. As uh, already discussed that this uh, portable device that we have here is uh, capable of being uh, charged by solar panels as well, which was tried in uh, Philippines already. So next slide, please. So thank you uh, very much, everyone. And uh, now Dr. Okamura will present uh, his wonderful contribution. Uh -huh. uh, thank you, Mr. Chandra Prakash, and thank you for making that quick, because at the end of this session, we are also looking to take some questions from the audience. So to not delay the question answer session, I think we'll go on with the last presentation. Uh, Dr. Okumura-san, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for this opportunity. The title of my talk today is Connect the Unconnected in a Phased Manner. We have been listening to the Sorry. presentation. Sorry. It's only slightly loud. We, have been, we have been listening to the presentation, previous presentations, mainly the use of LUX in a independent manner to create a, not internet, but the intranet. But finally, my goal is to provide internet connectivity to the world, almost all the disconnected or not connected area in a phased manner in a very practicable way. So the combination of the LUX, multiple LUX plus optical fiber cable is my uh, presentation. And next one, just briefly, I am a Global Plan Inc. Uh, president, and I am an expert of fiber optic systems and strategy standards. Actually, I am currently the international chairman of IC, fiber optic systems and active devices. And also, I am a developer of solution board and corresponding ITUT standards. The presentation that I'm going to tell you is based on ITUT recommendations, three recommendations that I have worked for 
as the editor, Erdut 1700, Erdut 110, and Erdut 163. Next, please. This is the, all the concept of the phased approach, step-by-step -step approach. That means from intranet, based on the use of the independent LACs, into internet connectivity. For example, if you have a village A, one day introduces LACs, one LACs, that generates a intranet capability to the village people, maybe maximum 256 people. And next day, village B introduces another LACs, and village C, the another LACs, independently. What will happen if we can connect those three multiple in intranet LACs by using optical fiber cable, broadband optical fiber cable. As you can see in the slide, that there's a big mountain or a difficult terrain. So basically, we have been thinking that laying the optical fiber cable in difficult terrain has been very, very costly and difficult and takes a long time for construction. But my idea will be eliminate that difficulties by using a submarine cable submarine cable, you can imagine, that is very robust against high water pressure. You can lay the submarine cable directly on the surface of the ground. That eliminates all the cost of construction so that you can have affordable connectivity. And it is something uh, not easy to understand so that I tried to make those uh, trials as an international ITUT standards. So finally, village ABC can be connected by using optical fiber cable, and one day in the future, you can connect maybe village C to the internet so that all of a sudden, those communities become internet-capable large communities. This is my idea. So you can see the slide up photograph here. The local people with the bare hands is now implementing optical fiber cable on the surface of the ground of the unexplored jungle. That is really happened in 2019 in Nepal mountain village. Next, please. So what is BIRD? This is optical fiber cable, so I will be very briefly touch upon what is the BIRD cable. That BIRD is broadband infrastructure for rural area digitalization. My, my invention, go. Next, please. This is optical fiber cable, as I said, submarine cable based so that you have a stand, no, yeah, you have a st very thick wall thickness stainless welded tube. Within that, up to 48 fiber cores are included. And the total diameter of the cable is of even 11, 11 millimeter finger size. That is based on the submarine cable technology and also supported by ITUT recommendations. That's applicable to all terrain, even in the sky, or in the water, or on the ground surface, or on the underground. Next, please. This is one example of uh, Japanese <laughs> quality. This is a cross-section picture of Japanese cable and the cable from other <laughs> country. So you can clearly see that the quality of the you know, cable structure and also the welding portion of the wall of the stainless steel tube, very much difficult uh, to use the uh, because optical cable outlet is the same, but the uh, inside is very different. Different. Next one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Operator, if you can go click the down portion of this uh, slide, you can the helicopter can fly. Yeah, like this. <laughs> Thank you. This is the just happening in March this year at the altitude of 5,300 meters to carry the cable drum into this high altitude area trying to lay the optical fiber cable bar to Mount Everest base camp. Thank you. Next one. So this is a cost reduction. About 90% cost reduction has been achieved because of a construction can be done on the surface of the ground. And this project has acquired a WISIS, WSIS, World Summit for Information Society, last year championship, because this uh, is a, a real solution opening the door for the globe to be uh, connected, connected to the unconnected practically by using LAX plus optical fiber cable. Next one. 
So summary, the top priority for ITT, ITU is the connected, connected, unconnected. It is very much uh, often spoken about, but we have been not available the real solution, physical solution, and I have now presented the solution here based on the Japanese Japanese technology plus ITUT standards, and, and that is RAX plus ITU compatible solution board that affordably swiftly bring broadband Wi-Fi hotspots practically <coughs> phase-wise across the difficult terrain in DIY basis, do it yourself by local people, and capex capex of the bad laying cable is about 6,000 US dollars per one kilometer. This is dramatically reduced cost for the implementation. And the criteria for bad cable and its deployment comply with the IT standards. That concludes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Uh, thank you, Dr. Okumura, for the wonderful presentation. Now we've just got over 10 minutes of time and the floor is open for questions. If you want to ask any questions to any of our speakers, uh, you're ready to do so. Anyone from the audience? If you have any questions, you can come up to the mic and ask the question. Thank you. Hello, uh, good morning. Carlos Rey Moreno from the Association for Progressive Communications. Thank you very much. Uh, I really think it's a, it's a very interesting solution. I've been following your work on Fiverr for many years on, on ITUT, and, uh, and it's very interesting how it is evolving uh, the connectivity of different access, you know, like bringing connectivity to the village or to whatever remote area it is now with uh, low uh, earth satellites or with microwave links, and then from there I start with LAX and relying it with with fiber to the next village, or even within the within the village, because of the interference uh, of the of the Wi-Fi, uh, I was thinking uh, there is a there is obviously a, a distance in between the lacks in between the villages that a fiber can go without a repeater, and how you've been considering that in the model that you were presenting, and what would be the increased cost of adding you know OLTs somewhere to the lacks, or you know the overall cost, because definitely it. It has some legs, in, particularly in, in, in mountainous regions where villages are close by, but you need, you, you need repeaters to, you cannot do microwave, right? So, thank you. Thank you. You have uh, presented a lot of issues. So, <laughs> first one is the wireless or wired. Wireless connectivity, microwave or satellite. Elon Musk launched uh, you know, 12,000 satellites by using 10 billion US dollars. And yet the life is only five to seven years. And the capacity, transmission capacity is only maximum one giga BPS per one, you know, kind of a satellite beam. So the microwave, fixed microwave also is the maximum at this moment is about one giga BPS, the maximum transmission. And the fiber can provide more than 10 times higher capacity than, than those, but one fiber. And as you can see, 48 fiber core can be included in the finger size cable. So the enormous improvement by using fiber. And next question is how long the fiber can connect each other. The maximum distance without any repeater is more than five, 500 kilometers today if you introduce uh, state-of-the-art technologies by using a fiber amplification or 300 kilometers or 100 kilometers. Just if you like to go only 50 kilometers, the very cheap commodity type, yeah, a media converter can just transmit to 50 kilometers or even 100 kilometers. So there is no issue. Thank you. Sorry, just to caveat a bit of my elements. One, one thing would be, you know, like 500 kilometers or more for sure, but then if you have several villages, you start to need to multiplex and you, you cannot have one single cable, so you need repeaters or multiplexes in between, and then relation to Leos, 100% on the capacity, microwaves on the capacity, but the $6,000 per kilometer for villages that cannot eat and that are far from wherever it is, think, you know, long term for sure fiber, but in the short term, maybe we need to use solutions that are more cost effective for the backhaul to get there and then, okay, okay. you know, little by little building up the economies, no? But, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, the length, the maximum length of the one cable is uh, about 12 to 15 kilometers. 
due to the size of the cable drum. If you go to the submarine cable, it can just uh, because of the 40 kilometers, 80 kilometers per one segment because of the cable length ship and the well equipped you know, manufacturing everything facilities are available. But for this terrestrial usage, the cable drum is at this moment is, is you know, only 12 to 15 kilometers. And each 15 to 12 kilometers, you need a splicing box. Like, uh, look like a repeater, but the inside is only fiber splicing, that's all. So there is no difficulty to, to you know, connect 100 kilometer away villages. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is James Nodufuye from uh, Nigeria. I have two quick questions. Uh, great presentations, anyway, great presentation. Uh, the first one, uh, very uh, nice uh, solution, both solution. Uh, like, uh, since it's targeting the underserved areas, what percentage of, uh, your, of, of Nepal, of the country, would this cover? And now, soon, do you project it can be covered? Then secondly, if you compare this to TV white space technology, TV white space technology, so, yeah, TV white space technology, which also can be applied in a rural area. So what are the advantages and disadvantages? TV white space boom. Thank you. Uh, as I said, that uh, in Nepal, I have been, uh, we have been uh, doing a project, as I said, up to from Namche Bazaar, is a foot of Mount Everest, to the base camp, 42 kilometers. Now, as you can see, the helicopter flying that carried in the cable drum already this much. So I don't know what percentage of the but the National Telecom Authority of Nepal declared that the use of this solution to Mount Everest region and Mount Annapurna trekking <coughs> route. And we have already been doing the, in the west part of uh, Nepal for about 10 kilometers. So I don't know how much percentage this can cover, but this is all terrain type. Go to mountains, underwater, in the water, everything. I should not say everything, but uh, I don't know. Go to the Mount Everest top is very difficult. And the use of uh, fiber and uh, open space for wires, you, you are TV space. I don't know. The capacity change, capacity difference is very large, so that I don't have a good idea. Maybe Sakano-san could tell about uh, I, I think TV white space uh, spectrum uh, can be used for extend the area of lugs, not, not the substitute of optical fiber. So uh, TV white space uh, may be possible to uh, be used for extending the area, but uh, uh, bandwidth uh, will be uh, limited because TV white space has a uh, large, you, you can cover a large area, but uh, 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 bandwidth is uh, low. So uh, we, uh, we can think of that kind of uh, structure. Uh, technology can be included in a large solution. Thank you. Hello. Does it work? Yeah, hello. My name is Niels Brock from DW Academy and Rhizomatica. Great presentation. Uh, two questions about the, the lags. Uh, how much open software and uh, open hardware is uh, in this device thinking of uh, also customization possibilities for local communities to get their hands on to uh, yeah, pitch it to their, uh, to their very needs? And uh, also about uh, this is a question more for the region. So if something is broken, how are the, the supply chain situation? Is this going to be like uh, e-waste uh, very quickly? Or do you have also solutions if there is a, a, a piece that is broken to, to quickly replace it? Thank you. OK, thank you very much for uh, good questions. And for the first one, lugs uh, uh, lugs uh, can be replaced. To, uh, as uh, CP says, uh, lags can be used as edge computing. So if you uh, include any uh, softwares, you can use uh, the uh, functions the software provides locally.
for example, in a feasibility study, we uh, installed the e-learning uh, management software inside the racks and use for school. It's the kind of thing you can use. So uh, you can use in a various way and for various applications uh, with, with our solutions. And the second one? Second one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so I, I would like to add uh, to this answer. So as uh, Jeff here wonderfully uh, talked about the implementation in Philippines, I think one thing that uh, important thing that they did in Philippines was to actually train the people there so that they can repair if anything were to happen to this device. They could implement, uh, you know, taking a box by themselves uh, in a remote region uh, without help, any help from us. And uh, it's built from uh, off the shelf uh, components that are uh, readily available, not just in Japan or uh, one locality, but uh, they can replace by the hardware available in Philippines or hardware available in India. As for your question about the open hardware, right now we don't have, but um, let's say there is uh, definitely a possibility to include uh, capable hardware available like Raspberry Pi or if there were other open hardware available that can sustain the kind of uh, server that we run in this. So yes, uh, I hope it answers. Uh, maybe, maybe I can add something for that one. Um, LAX is a platform, so under the auspice of Dr. Sakano, and it evolves to different modules. So it started with file repositories, calls, and all those areas. So eventually, the use cases started to come in based on real scenario on the community. For example, Elax is useless during disaster, especially Typhoon, when all the devices in the island doesn't have any power. Where do they charge? So again, technology is defeated. So I asked Dr. Sakano if you can look for solutions. So they talk with India. Then LAX become a, a charging station to the devices on the islands. So again, LAX is a platform, and we learn a lot from it. And we just met Dr. Okamura, and he said, point-to-point uh, -point connection or wireless connection is, is expensive. So maybe you could look for ways, let's say, a, 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 a low-cost fiber optics. And again, we are learning a lot from LUX and through this project, and hopefully Dr. Sakano with the new one, the, they called it as the, uh, the new project. Yeah, FLOS, the front line operation. And operating Jeff, system. we're out Thank of you. time now. Yeah. That, that's all we can do for today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And we also have a booth uh, on, on the first floor, so we can always join in and talk about this uh, informally outside. So thank you, everyone, for joining in. Let's collaborate, let's network, and let's find solution to bridge the digital divide together. Thank you so much. Have a good day.